Hi, Karen. Karen, are you there? Hello. Karen, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm here. I... Can you hear me? Okay, let's try this. Perfect, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Hmm. Okay. Can you hear me? I can't hear you though. Hmm. It looks like it's picking it up. Let me go ahead. Is that better? Hi, Karen. Can you hear me now? I can. Oh, good. Donna, good morning. Hi, Karen. Hi. Oh, let's see. People are coming in. Good morning. Good morning, morning. You, Karen. Well, I'm excited to have Tanya here. Um, Mickey is still uh, on sabbatical, and we'll be back next month with some, I don't know what she's planning, but it'll be fun. <laughs> we have a couple more people, Tanya, so we'll wait a little bit. Sounds great. We can get started, though, without, what we do is go around first, and then the, then, then the speaker. So, good morning, Tina. Hi, tell how are you? About, I'm good. Tell me about you. I am a realtor in the Twin Cities metro area. And uh, I know Mickey through my husband, Ray. Mickey used to have a storage facility over at the place uh, where she did a lot of her, her stuff for um, all the donations that we would gather for her. And we just kind of hooked up and... Here we are. So she sends me these invites all the time. And this one was just kind of interesting to me because I am a member of a large group, but it's hard to keep that separate from some of the stuff that I have to do as far as a realtor goes for my own business. So I was excited about that. So we've lived here for quite some time since about 2006 and I love it. So that's me. <laughs> Good. If you did, you want to put your contact information in the chat or not? Sure. No, I can do that. Okay. Oh, Donna, maybe. Sure, I'll go next. Um, okay. My name is Donna. You can hear me, right? Yep. Um, my name is Donna McCurdy, and uh, I do have a uh, small business called Needle Tree. It's a corporation. And um, it's we, our first product is called Soccer Birds. It's a business venture. Um, I guess my big news is the trademark has flipped over into registered for the paper Soccer Birds. So now it's a little R instead of a little T. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, and in addition, uh, we're musicians at this house, and uh, we've 
been busy doing that, but there's, and, and then in addition, I, and it sounds like it's totally disconnected, but through buddy calls with Mickey, we found out that it's integral is my uh, calling to be a water aerobics instructor. I've been a water aerobics instructor since the year 2000. So I'll just, uh, it turns out that buoyancy factor in the pool um, plays into my whole life function. And so it's very important for me to uh, get in the water often. And uh, I teach from deck though. I'm teaching a new program called La Blast Splash. I'm going to be teaching my first class Monday night for this whole, like it's, a derivative of one of the guys who was on Dancing with the Stars. I didn't, I didn't, I've never watched that show. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's a fitness program based on dance moves. And the guy, they made it for the water also. So the blast splash, I'm like all excited about it. So it's at the YWCA Midtown. Of course, there is only one YWCA Minneapolis now I've taught at the downtown pool for 23 years and it's closing today <laughs> so I set up this little last splash almost intentionally to distract myself from the sadness of saying goodbye to my favorite swimming pool so anyway it sounds it sounds like a lot of things going a lot of directions, but that is my life. So I'll put my stuff in the chat. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Sam. Good morning. Hi, everybody. My name is Sam Crump. Uh, I live in the north part of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got about five businesses uh, going. I'm also a an attorney, and um, so three of my businesses are bricks and mortar, and two of them are e-commerce. Uh, I happen to know uh, Tanya for about the last year, and uh, one of my most recent uh, ventures is an e-commerce business with her, which we might hear a little bit about today. And uh, so when I saw she was going to be talking about branding, um, I, I knew it would be a great opportunity to jump on and learn some more about what she has to teach. Did you want to put any contact information in the chat? Sure. Happy to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I fixed your ticket. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah, like it's like it didn't it didn't come through quick enough, you know, it's like it just rolled me into order it again. But anyway, so are we doing introductions right now? Yes, we are. Sounds like okay. I'm Sandy Cleland uh, with Remax Results. I'm a residential real estate agent. I work in the Minneapolis, St. Paul area of Minnesota. And um, I, um, I've been uh, helping buyers and sellers for 33 years, and I work a lot in South Minneapolis, Richfield, and Bloomington, um, and, and I, just, uh, I just love it. And, um, you know, one of the tricky parts of moving is when you're a seller, you know, you need to buy and sell at the same time. So there's a lot of conversations about how that all works together. Um, you know, what's your, what are your options? What are your strategies and how this, how's this all going to work? So I really like uh, helping people, you know, through all those, all those challenges. So um, that's, that's me. Well, I really like your, your videos that you've been doing. Thank I you. you. I think you found your niche there. <laughs> Thank you. Good. I'm working yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, good morning, Janet Mills. Hello, Karen. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm a print graphic designer, and I work, uh, I put together a magazine called the Hosta Journal. So I'm interested in learning about branding today. Um, have had some experience in it, but really wide, vastly open about learning. And um yeah, I had one more question, but I'll I'll think of it later. <laughs> oh, I, oh, it's November. It's November today, everybody. <laughs> November first. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I want to um, catch up on some projects because I just had a big deadline, and then we all had. If you're in Minnesota, not Arizona, we all had the big deadline of um, if you if you wanted to use your hose or rake. <laughs> um, it's or should have. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
I've heard that insects thrive if you don't rake your leaves and, and oh, uh, it's probably better for nature. But anyway, we, we had that little deadline of uh, fall before it snowed before Halloween. Um, but nature goes on. But anyway, I'm using November to kind of learn and grow and get ahead on things. Nice to meet you. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. And don't worry about the ticket, okay? Okay. Um, are we just introducing ourselves? We are. So I'm Jamie, and um, I have a couple businesses, but I'm um, on here today because um, I'm branding one business and rebranding another business. Um, brand rebranding my. Um, I'm a private chef curator, so I'm. Uh, kind of rebranding and figuring out what that looks like. I've been working on it for a while and still kind of at it. And then um, I have a new, well, I've had some semi trucks, but I have a new trucking um, company and um, we are working on the, re the br not rebranding, branding it from the beginning. So um, it's kind of a, neat venture and um how we're working it through and the kind of the stamp that we want to put on the trucking world is kind of a big in your face thing so we're toying with two of us on our team our corporate very come from a very corporate side of things and three of us come from a complete entrepreneurial side of things um so it's just playing the line with how do we make a bold impact, but also um, not scare our two corporate people at the same time. <laughs> Thank you. Well, good morning. I'm Karen Karsten, and I am the executive director of Rich Chicks, and I host NW2. Um, right now, I'm recovering from COVID and trying my best. <laughs> I'm working on uh, two books. One is this book of short stories, and the other is a book about prosperity. And uh, I'm a writer, a poet, um, and I was in corporate for many, many years. <laughs> and one of the things I found when I went to be an entrepreneur is that um, you don't know anything, and I'm used to knowing things. So it took a long time to actually be an entrepreneur because I was used to people coming to me <laughs> just because I knew everything. But when you're starting as a business, you have to go out and get people to come to you. So that's a that's been a big learning process for me over the years. But and I'm also a life coach and I have a um, I have two certifications for coaching. One is from coaches uh, from QTI, which is traditional coaching. And the other one is from Art Abundance, which is coaching using art as a as a way to get people to um, come to what they want faster. And that, that's been fun. So we're running to the uh, introductions really fast, which is good because that leaves more time for you, Kanya. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm so excited to be here. Hello, Janet. I remember your face. Donna, I remember taking a walk with you and talking all about soccer birds yes. and what to do. And I remember from the the when the very first seed of the idea started to when yeah. you found someone to help with the artwork. So it's so fun to see someone or kind of go full circle to hear some of these projects. So what a day. What a day. I was thinking about when I first met you, which was um, at the Pinstripes Happy Hour 10 years ago. Yes. October. Yeah, that, that's a big part of um, kind of what I wanted to share. So I left my 10-year corporate career on October 8th of 2013. And the next day, October 9th, at 9 a.m. Wednesday morning, my very first networking meeting in my new career as an entrepreneur full-time was Rich Chicks NW2. So that's good timing. <laughs> isn't that awesome, Donna? So yeah. it's, 
It's just over my tenure. I was hoping Marie Merriam would be here um, because she and I met that day and we are still dear friends as well. I should almost message her and be like, hey, get on this call, darn it. (laughs) Where are you? But um, so it's just, I'm, I was so excited to get invited back here when Mickey messaged me. So Mickey is Karen's business partner, daughter, entrepreneur in many, many ways as well. And um, when she messaged me, she's like, would you come be a speaker? It's so timely and fitting. Um, and it really is. And um, NW2 And monetary identity is one of the courses that is part of NW2. I went through that as well Um, during kind of the middle of some of the different branding conversations I'm going to walk you guys through today. Um, So what what a very exciting moment. And just to kind of show you what consistency and longevity, um, kind of how one thing leads to the next. Now I'm in Arizona, but guess what I have at 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning? It's 7.15 here now. Sam is part of the networking group that I attend every morning at 9 a.m. on Wednesdays. (laughs) And I started with that group um, pretty much the week I decided that I was going to really jump into networking in my local community as soon as I moved here. So I just think networking is just the way that you develop and evolve as a person, both in business and personal growth. And it just makes your life richer in every shape of that word. Um, So it's just an honor to be back here because I feel like it just plays such a big role in my life. So, so thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Karen. All right, should we jump right in? Yeah, I think you're still muted, Karen. Yes, I am still muted because I'm supposed to be. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But yeah, I think you should jump right in. I think everybody's ready to jump in. I'm looking at the snow out the window and thinking it's nice to be in here warm and cozy and listening to you. There you go. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to kind of walk you through a little bit of my journey. I'm also going to bring in, because I know this um, this particular networking group, I have a little uh, training that I do that's all about the cash flow quadrant and how different parts of what I've done throughout my life fit into the cash flow quadrant that Robert Kiyosaki um, teaches. Um, He wrote the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So I thought it was a very fitting um, initial like framework for this training around personal branding because personal branding is kind of like the foundation of a house where it is, whether you are at corporate in your position or you are, you know, an entrepreneur that wears very many hats, then it becomes more about how do I maintain a personal brand when there are so many different kind of fa- um, facets of my brand because I have all these different positions. So I can kind of share how I've kind of navigated through that little experience as well, as I really have reinvented and held a number of different spaces. And I know a number of you do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here um, and get into... Uh, the presentation mode. I think it's always so fun to have something. Most of us learn in a number of different ways and visually is a big one of them. So I'm going to start with the cash flow quadrant. Robert Kiyosaki teaches there's a number of different ways to earn income. And I play and have played in all of these different quadrants. So I'm always going to, I'm going to start out with the employee role. The employee role that I held the longest and really gave the most of my efforts to was actually as a public health program manager in health at health partners. So I helped with the marketing from a public health perspective for level one trauma center regions hospital right down the road from where Karen lives. I helped with managing kind of the marketing and the overall image and then implementation of public policy for Medicaid and Medicare programs for the clinic systems They have now, I think they've just crossed over 40 clinics in the metro area and around Minnesota primarily, and then the health plan as well. 
So I really gave a little bit of everything I had to that position. Um, this was one of my last, this was actually the blurry one was the very last day in 2013 in my job um, when the cube had been cleaned out, but I had just hit my 10 year anniversary. I completed my master's degree in healthcare administration. Um, but some things happened in the corporate space. And when you're talking about cash flow and how you are compensated in the corporate space, you work once, you get paid once. If you stop showing up and doing the tasks you're assigned, they're going to stop paying you. Um, for me, I didn't feel a sense of security because I found that I had little control over my growth. And if I'm not growing, I get really antsy and feel like I'm in a straight jacket really, really quickly. Um, so while I was there during that 10 years, I became very involved in any wellness initiatives we had for different staff people. That's kind of this committee up there. Um, I found myself, I would have little um, contests to see how many flights of stairs I could climb in a day going between all the meetings and fun little things like that to continue to grow and evolve. I even got involved in fitness and bodybuilding for a while. That's down here. So I would I would be you know eating six meals a day um, from my from my cube. Boy, could I have used chef curated meals, Jamie? And <laughs> that would have been amazing um, to have a little bit more interesting food options in my life at that point. Um, but long story short, I ended up getting very antsy. Um, and I would always create these ways that I could grow outside of what I was doing within my corporate space, which led me to a number of different things from the self-employed space as well. So one of the things that I did is I took a life coaching um, course and programming and really developed in that at the same time becoming a business owner as well. So it's very interesting because from a branding perspective, I started to kind of launch Calm Hustle brand and also used kind of the anthem of Freedom Catalyst during this time period. Um, I had a radio show for a while. I did different coaching for, for life and small business all throughout the years of pretty much um, 20, I would say circa 20, 2009 all the way to 2018, different facets of this kind of consulting, coaching, lifestyle managing, um, small business coaching showed up. Um, and that that's also going to come into play in a little bit here. Um, one of the things that I love doing was interviewing other entrepreneurs. And this was kind of um, after I'd gotten started with um, Karen and networking at NW2, authors, so this is LaBelle. She was um, she has written a number of books. Fantastic woman. Um, she is some, definitely someone in the Twin Cities area. If you can look her up, she's amazing and does a lot of very cool things for the community as well. I also did um, some work with Lana. They had the Creator Space over in St. Paul, which sadly just closed its doors um, just recently. And I think two months ago. Um, and last month they had some open houses and things, holding spaces for artists. They had a coffee shop in there and a lot of different meeting rooms for dance and different things like that, um, Donna. So it was a really, really cool space. So I've always loved kind of propping up other brands using my brand and allowing that to evolve. Um, so that was kind of the self-employed space. I was trying to figure that out while I was still working my corporate job. And then I also became a business owner while working my corporate job as well. When you're thinking about the cash flow quadrant, the self-employed place, you basically own your job. When you become a business owner, often you are owning the business. You sometimes have a little bit more risk over your head because a lot of times there's um, employees involved with those ventures, but it's not all dependent on your active work. So for me, that looked like owning a brick and mortar franchise first of all. Um, so we opened this franchise over in Bloomington. It was in a strip mall next to where the Jamba Juice is off of Bloomington and France Avenue and Old Shakopee Road, um, if any of you know where that is. Um, and we owned a play and trade video game store. This was initially supposed to be my fitness franchise and I'd found an investor. He happened to work in marketing um, and was a vendor for health partners. And he saw me drinking a protein shake 
And on the way to, um, on the riding the light rail to go to work at Health Partners one morning, I was reading a book um, by, oh my gosh, I can't, Ask and You, Ask and You Shall Receive. I can't, it's by Hay House Marketing. Um, and I, that morning had decided I was going to find an investor and I was going to open a fitness franchise. And at 1030 that morning, I was sitting at the front desk down in the marketing department for a Regents hospital and the clinic system. And one of the vendors walked in and he saw me drinking a protein shake. And he's like, you know what? I decided I'm going to be an investor and I want to own a franchise and fitness. And I'm looking for someone that would manage it. Would you ever be know of anybody? And I was that day I manifested that idea. You guys, how crazy is that story? I know Karen does a lot of vision boarding and things like that. Um, and that was how the journey started to become a business owner. Long story short, Minnesota was saturated with fitness franchises and 24 hour gyms at that time. And we could not find a great location. And my husband was kind of floundering in his career, not as stable in his career as I was in mine or looking for something very different where I wasn't ever planning on fully leaving health partners at that point. And we saw plan trade video games and ended up pivoting because the business model of this was very, very strong. So that's how my fitness franchise became a video game store. <laughs> but we opened in the fall of 2007. And um, I have a very in-depth training on this too. But long story, rough story was that when the markets crashed, everybody started trading instead of spending cash in stores like these in 2008. So as we went through, by the end of 2009, we had $100,000 of inventory in the back. We were selling out and hitting capacity numbers for tournaments that we had. Um, we were doing very, very well. Um, we would do things like we had this great big Mario that would show up at the Twins games at the stadium all the time. Um, we were doing things like... Um, sponsoring different sports activities. Like here you can see our logo on the different MMA gyms and we were sponsoring all kinds of different things in the Twin Cities area. But we ended up having to close our doors and I lost everything um, in January of 2010, including rental properties. Um, we had to file bankruptcy because we had signed a 10 year lease and personally guaranteed it on this franchise space. Um, so we we literally started completely over in 2010. Um, both of us had kept our full-time corporate careers and had employees during the day. Then we would go back and work at the store from like six to midnight. It was definitely an adventure. I learned a lot. Um, unfortunately, the cash flow during a time of recession was not in our favor um, with people trading so much and not having the cash to spend. So we just, I learned a lot about management of business and money throughout this time period, um, but found ourselves starting over um, at age 30, um, having kind of wiped out the first 10 years of our career and financing and all those things. So I played in the investor bucket just coming back to the investor bucket. But as we look at the cash flow quadrant, coming back to the rebuild, the rebranding, and kind of launching that all again, which I think as small business owners and creators, which all of you are in some way, shape, or form, I think this is the bucket we all aim to get in. You know, income that does not depend on active work. And um, right now, my time is primarily spent, um, if you look around online and why we're really going to, how we're really going to dig into personal brand is that you can't tell exactly what I do, but you can tell what my vision, my values and what I stand for. And right now I'm kind of playing in a space that takes advantage of all of these quadrants and what I love most in each of them. And that is in creating systems and duplication and having the Melaleuca business model be the kind of the finance or the financial vehicle behind it all. Um, I started this in September of 2018, five years after I had walked away from my full-time corporate career. Um, ironically, this is probably the most branding of that as my financial vehicle that you will see on my different social media platforms because throughout all these different evolutions of my life, 
I have maintained a strong personal brand. And your personal brand is literally your walking business card. And I know all of you have heard this, but people work with you because they know, like, and trust you. They can see what and who you stand for. And my personal brand has always done that. So Melaleuca is a manufacturing company that distributes about 500 household goods to homes. I do marketing and education, setting people up with a $19 shopping club membership to get things like their supplements and their candles and their cleaning products that are non-toxic shipped straight to their home. So depending on the group that I'm talking with, so like when I go and talk with Sam and our networking group, a lot of times I'm focusing on, you know, non-toxic cleaning products in the home. Did you know that cleaning with Clorox or Lysol and those types of things, even once a week causes as much lung damage as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day? Could I help you get better, safer product? You know, so I'm talking to the consumer there and networking for the consumer. On LinkedIn, I'll go ahead and show you guys that in just a minute. I am specifically targeting healthcare folks that are looking for an additional income to maybe supplement or maybe have the option to work their nursing position part-time, but they want to still help people and be in wellness. I'm working on targeting specifically business professionals. So how my brand shows up on my different social media platforms varies on my intentions for that platform. So I want to walk you through that and how I've done that. Now, even though it's only been five years, exactly 61 months, my overhead for this business is about $80 of personal products I'm using. I'm backed by a strong corporate entity that feels like being kind of like an entrepreneur, like employed by that entity because they're doing distribution, customer service, and um, manufacturing of the products. I don't have employees, but I definitely have people kind of like being a business owner that are partnered with me. They're a volunteer army that I mentor and they opt in for mentoring but I definitely don't own those employees. So I'm working in all the different aspects of what I love most about those different quadrants and have been able to take all of the skills I built up, many of them through classes like Monetary Identity through NW2, many of them like teaching and working in groups at health partners and you know having influence over networks with the public health nurses all of that I brought together and have been able to earn over $1.25 million in the last five years in income here at the Melaleuca business model. And those that I personally mentored have made over $1.8 million, even though the company is 38 years old and we were definitely not first to the game. Um, it's been amazing to be able to take all these skills that I've learned in all these different places and monetize them. My personal brand throughout all of it though, now if you take a look at my LinkedIn profile, look at the top of this, it's Calm Hustle. Something that was born and that motto of mine that was born way back in 2008, nine and 10, it still has a life now and is playing a major role in my life today. I've always shown up as me and let people see who the true Tani is and what my vision and my values are. What do I stand for? And I'm so proud I went throughout that entire journey because of the lifestyle I've been able to create. Um, this is actually um, right around the time I walked away. Um, Garrett was born September 13th. I walked away October 8th. So he's he's within his first year here. Um, but I didn't want to miss any of that. And that is why I fought through all these different evolutions. This was um, two Wednesdays ago. I hopped on a plane um, at 7.15 in the morning. I was on a walk. I decided I wanted to be at a meeting with these people I'd helped mentor in Minneapolis that was happening that night. So I, ca I caught a 9.40 a.m. flight and didn't have to ask for PTO. I used to always want more PTO than I had at Health Partners to go home to see my family in South Dakota. But I got to spend then that weekend, this is the walk. I, I, I put a picture of the walk where I made that decision. And the, the ability to move from Minnesota to Arizona 
you know, I moved away from family, but what it brought us was health and walks every morning and a lifestyle. So all these different business opportunities and everything and evolutions of growth made it so I had the flexibility to fly back home to Minnesota. Here's Hoagies in Hopkins two weeks ago, one of the, my favorite breakfast places, if you guys have been there, um, all kinds of different things. This is in Minna, um, St. Louis Park at the Nature Center. We were doing the Halloween thing. Um, so all these different evolutions have led to the flexibility and the freedom to really do all of these things. Um, so let's talk about the brand that really led to that evolution. So when you guys are thinking about branding, Donna, you're writing a book now. You have a number of different things. As a realtor for Tina and Sandy, there are so many realtors that people can choose from. So you need to stand out in a big way. One of the biggest things I recommend you do, and Jamie, and with your businesses too, especially because you have so many different facets of people playing a role in your businesses, and you have a number of different businesses yourself, you guys show up consistently and often, write down what the pillars of your values and your intent are. What are your pillars? So Sandy, it might be what sets you apart as a realtor? And then what is your snowflake? What makes you truly unique on a personal level? So that when people are looking at your social media, you're so consistent over time that they feel like they know you. And right now, authenticity wins above everything else. Authenticity wins more than perfection. People don't want to see that you're perfect. They want to see that they show up and that you are relatable. You want to be top of mind when they are ready to make a decision. And that's where your personal brand is a long game. You have to show up again and again and again. You guys, my branding, if you look back at my Facebook page um, around 2006, 2007, 2008, I could literally go take the majority of those posts and post them today and they would still look in alignment because my personal brand has always been about wellness being bold in what you want and the lifestyle you want, it's always been about family and just general well-being. It's always been about kind of creating and designing the life that you want. Those same things ring true regardless of how I am monetizing and what my financial vehicle is in my life. I would scrape by and not fully monetize that personal brand until September of 2018. And then I would come to make a million dollars within five years. But it took that figuring out who and what I wanted to be and reinventing myself a number of times, but always showing up, always showing up no matter what. Because if you are not seen, if you are not showing up, there is no way for people to find you. I remember when you were doing your introduction, Karen, you said, you know, it was so interesting learning to be an entrepreneur because people always came to, to me because I knew things when I was an employee and a corporate staff. I was needed. I had the exact same experience in February of, so it would have been February of 2014. Um, I was sitting on my couch it was snowing outside of Minnesota. And I remember sitting there thinking, and I, I had tears running down my face because I was sitting on that couch and I was like, no one would notice if I never left this couch today. No one would notice if I didn't show up for work because it is an entirely different place of vulnerability and action for each and every one of you in your entrepreneurial space to show up because no one's making you. I didn't have to show up and do another networking meeting. I didn't have to show up and do another post on social media. I didn't have to make another call to try to earn someone's business by first proving to them my value. All of that's a choice. When I was working at a corporate job, I would get 200 emails a day. 
I may have felt stressed, but you know what was awesome? Feeling needed. It was never a choice of whether I was going to show up or not. I had to. I had a boss that would be very upset if I didn't. And a bunch of people that were depending on me in the maternal and child health world. For each and every one of you that just gave your introduction, you have to go out and prove your value. You have to ask people to take a look at what you do. You have to invite them to spend their time, which is super valuable, their resources, and their money to earn their time. Like we had to go out on social media and promote, hey, come show up, give us your $10 and even more importantly, your time. How much is two hours of your life worth? It's super valuable. And that's what you guys have to show up and do every day. You know, Sam owns a frozen yogurt shop. He has to go out there and market and win people walking in that door every single day. His employee just has to show up and know how to scoop the ice cream if someone has a question, answer any questions, and punch numbers in a cash register. But it's a different type of show up than what Sam needs to do. Sam needs to make the initiative himself to go and put the ads out, to go show up at a networking meeting every morning at 9 a.m. Because quite honestly, if Sam doesn't and his business doesn't grow, who's, who's rear is on the line? Sam's. But there's not a boss telling him he has to do that. So it's a very different life as an entrepreneur. Now, I want to talk a little bit about that virtual business card, because I think in today's day and age, love it or hate it, unfortunately, we are tied to these things and we are tied to social media. Because the first thing someone's going to do, even if they meet you in person, is they are going to go creep on your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your LinkedIn platform. They're going to Google you and they are going to see if you are legit. Do you show up and can you win them over? Especially in the real estate world, I would be doing so much video and showing up for myself so that when people go to look and they are comparing two different people, can you win them over? Because at the end of the day, even if it's via social media and the internet, it's still relationships and how you make people feel that will make the biggest difference in your bottom line as a business. Do people have a feeling when they go and visit your profiles and your page? Do they know what you stand for and what your essence is? Because especially for those of us and all of us, we're not, we're not, I mean, we're not super young on this call. Let's just be honest. But our target market is often who we once were even two or three or five years ago. So we're all aiming to talk to those people. And I think people are especially looking for authenticity and to make a connection when they're making buying decisions. So let's take a look. When you take a look at, um, let's start with LinkedIn, I guess. Why I start with LinkedIn is because I wanna show you guys something. If you go out to Google, and even if you haven't been active on LinkedIn, somehow they have a major monopoly on the search engines. I, I'm going to ask you guys right now, go out there. You all are on some type of a device right now. Um, if you can, go Google your name. Google your name. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, there's my name, Tanya Hagri. All right, when I Google my name, the first things that come up, top three are Facebook, LinkedIn, and a bunch of images, TikTok, even though I don't even use it really, but primarily Facebook. Uh, how many of you was LinkedIn one of your top three? Yeah, Donna, it was your top three. Anybody else? Was LinkedIn one of your top three? Yes. What? LinkedIn is one of my top three, too. Okay, I don't G use it e at all. Oh, Damien, you just made my day with validation. She just said, I don't use it at all. Um, uh, An intern set this up for me in 2004. 
and I haven't touched it since then. Somehow I have 530 followers and 500 connections. 100%. Jamie and you just validated what I specifically wanted to get across to you guys today. You have a personal brand whether or not you know it. So it's very important for you to be intentional with it. That doesn't mean you have to do something crazy, but I would encourage you to show up. And LinkedIn, I believe, is going to be the next thing that especially those of us in the business world, they're paying attention to because everybody Googles you when they're going to see what you're doing. Well, if one of the first things that comes up, I guarantee you almost for everybody, even if it was set up by an intern almost 20 years ago, LinkedIn's gonna be one of them. So I took a LinkedIn mastery class this summer. I'm in a six month program. Everybody thought I was crazy because Instagram and Facebook are so popular. I don't care. I'm playing the long game with my personal brand. And I encourage you all to as well. You don't have to go crazy, but you need to make sure that what is showing up for you is curated so it can work to your favor when someone Googles you. So when you go and look at my LinkedIn now, I'm being very intentional since since, um, July. I'm going all 100% business and attracting business professionals. So that is what all my content is aimed to. In my featured section, I put all third-party validation things. Look at, I was on a podcast on how to build a personal brand two years ago. So that's up there. Um, But other companies, um, other companies things. So now when you look at all my posts on um, LinkedIn, like you can get an essence of who I am you know, what I stand for and what I'm doing, you're seeing that and you're getting a general flavor of whether or not you and I would vibe. So maybe you're going to reach out to me. Most of the time, I'll be straight up honest, you guys, people are not reaching out to me. But when I reach out to them, before they decide whether or not they're going to answer this message or not, they go and look and see what's Tanya like. Is she doing things? I'm still doing the same things I was doing 10 years ago with the radio show. This woman owns a sleep um, company, helping families with kids under six sleep better so they can, you know, they can live better, you know, and have a better household. I'm telling my story again and again and again. The same story that I just told you guys this morning, I, I that's part of my brand two weeks ago. You know, because I'm talking to the person I used to be, you know, do you feel like your secure position in corporate isn't so secure anymore? You know, it is a different world than 2013 when I left. Everybody thought I was crazy for leaving a corporate job. However, my income and my stability and security financially is much better than most now. I know exactly what I'm going to make every month, whether I show up or not, because I've built a base over time where some people have been let off corporate jobs just like that. Now, I also show up very authentically. You guys look at me in this ugly, uh, my ugly sun gear that doesn't match, but I'm still talking and giving my thoughts because I get a lot of my greatest downloads of information when I'm out on a walk. I'm sharing that so people know what you see is what you get. This is who Tanya is. She shows up her community and she's all about family, you know, and I share all kinds of things about, you know, developing my life into and creating that life. It's the same vibes that I've had for years. Um, It's just how you monetize it and how you show up. So then Jamie, and when you have a number of different roles, like right now, I'm specifically talking primarily to people that want to earn and to create an online business. So like mine is very targeted, but (coughs) even for you in your Um, In your headlines, and when you show up on Instagram, when you show up on Facebook, when you show up in these different places and have people go and check you out, what you can do is actually list out all of those different, you know, multidimensional entrepreneurial things you're doing. So when you list your 
on top of the box is the name of our my LLC S Corp, whatever. Um, list your different positions and you can have multiple. And then when you're setting out your pillars, I would just say, okay, so this week, do I have one post that's overall about my vision and my values? Do I have one post that's about why I'm passionate about my trucking company and what makes us unique? Do I have one post about my um, my chef or my food company? I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly what it's called. You know, do I have one post in each of those areas? And then do I have one post about what my snowflake, They one of my coaches called it the snowflake. Like what makes me truly unique? So, so me, it's always like, my dogs, everybody loves seeing dogs. So I throw them in there all the time because they get the most interaction than any of my posts anyways. So like those things, I touch on each aspect and show up because I have different markets I'm marketing to, but always building on my personal platform. You can also have your business pages, but those can be very niched, but your personal platform can show the different aspects of your life and your business. Like Sam, you do a good job of this. You talk about your wellness businesses. You talk about being an entrepreneur overall. Like when you go to Sam's personal media, you know who Sam is. I think you could, like you've transitioned out. If you were building your legal business, Sam just actually um, merged and is transitioning out. Congratulations, by the way, on building a successful business that he was able to sell and transition out of now as he goes to the next phase of his life and what he wants to create and do. Like if he was in a build phase though, I'd be like, Sam, I don't see much about any of your legal business. Like I would love to see if Sam was in a build phase for that. He's not, so I'm not, if he was, I would say, Sam, I wanna see a live three minutes on who you were able to help this week in your legal business. As an attorney, who's someone you're able to help this week? Tell me the story of how you helped them. And I would want a, a client story every week. So like Sandy, Tina, I want a story and maybe a couple pictures and why it was so unique. What you did for that customer as their um, seller's representative or their buyer's representative, what made it unique? And tell their story. People relate to stories. And then I also want to see facets of you and what makes you special and stand out from other realtors. And then especially on Facebook, not quite as much on LinkedIn, but also on Facebook, especially because a lot of the people in our networks, you know, the millennials make sure, I'd say 10 and 20 and 30 years younger than us, you'd want to be on TikTok and Instagram and some of those that as well. I think you should have a presence there, but you don't need to update it all the time. There's still a lot of our folks are all on Facebook. They still are. They're looking on Facebook. So when they look on Facebook, what are they seeing? Like, here's where I'm posting things like, hey, my friends are so important to me. Time with my friends is important to me. And then I'm weaving in those business posts, but I'm also weaving in things that make me really relatable and funny. Like, what do I find? Where's my humor? Where's my family? I'm wishing people happy birthday. I'm using Facebook like everybody else does. And that's primarily to connect with family. And we, but I still weave my business posts in as well. But I show up even more so as like a real person with a lot of randomness. So I'm not just selling, selling, selling. I'm attracting, attracting, attracting as a real person. So you can really get a feel for who I am. But about every third or fourth, there's there's Minneapolis a couple of weeks ago, you guys. We had so much fun. Gosh, was that last minute flight worth it? <laughs> that was the best. But my business is still weaved in, but I just make sure I always look like a real person. And that authenticity shines through. Okay. Any questions about that before I get into a little bit more of the technical things about how to like put together some of the graphics and things like that? Can we stop for one minute, you guys? Any questions or anything that you hope I still talk about going forward? 
I, oh, I, I guess. Oh, let's go with I Donna first. Okay. Oh, I was just, uh, do you think that, you know, you talked about on LinkedIn, it's okay to just talk about all your stuff on, on your, on your page. Did, should we not bother getting uh, the niche business? I mean, do the niche, niche business pages, they're there, but you, they probably are a lesser focus. Is that the kind of the thing or just I'll skip show, it? I'll show you. I'll show you. That's a great question, Donna. I'll show you an example or two. Um, so just let me write that down quick. So LinkedIn biz pages. I'll show you what I would recommend. Okay. Um, there's different rules of thought on that. The personal and, is the most important, but I'll show you what I would recommend. And just one other question is um, with LinkedIn, I'm not interested in taking a six month class, but <laughs> you don't have to. The, I'll tell you there, everything uh, I learned. <laughs> is that you right? Like, how can we get that information okay. a little quicker? Yep. I'll, I'll give you, it. I'll give you my, my little checklist and I'll actually be able to share the checklist with this group as in a the whole. Chat. Oh, yep. Perfect. Yep. I'll give it to Karen as a follow-up to send out to nice. everybody. And it's really simple. I, I get them laminated and then I just, um, where's my little laminated one. I just laminate it and then I check off the things. So it's super simple. Yep. I'll, I make that as a to-do right now. LinkedIn checklist to Karen. Okay. Any other questions for you, Donna? No, you're good. Okay. Karen. Yes. Well, I Googled myself and there are four other Karen Carsons and one of them is dead. So <laughs> Did a lot of images of you come up, Karen? Um, not really. I, I, I think I need you to, <clears throat> It was kind of odd. I haven't seen it come back that way before. Yeah. I, I'll show you what I would recommend um, to help with that so that people could find the right Karen fast. So I'll show you that too. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, I'm glad I'm not dead. So. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, I had a question. Um, uh, you talk a lot about uh, on your social media sharing just fun things that people see like you with your dogs and things like that and it lets people see um who you are it also maybe engages them in in dialogue with you they're posting asking questions um but then on the other side of it is especially some of the people we've got realtors and things like that on here um they can be much more direct about here's my business i'm a realtor i'm a you know my past life i'm a lawyer um how, how would you say balance, like what ratio, how do you balance that um, in terms of social media anyway? Yeah, I think it depends a little bit on the network that you have built on Facebook and social media and what they expect. Um, but if you are in a build mode, I think you can always, I think if you are sprinkling in one to two personal posts a week, you uh, you could do, I, I think, a higher ratio. So like 33% personal, 66% business, especially if you're in build mode. And I personally don't think you can do too much. I always, I always tell people when they're worried about what other people think or they think I'm all business or that I'm doing, I'm like, oh, it's so cute. You think you're that important to everybody else. That's adorable. That's what they say. P people aren't thinking about you, so. They aren't. <laughs> they really aren't. And your, everybody's feeds are so different. Like I know when I open it, sometimes I see the same exact feed over and over again. It's so random. So I, I, I'm, I'm of the mind of more, not less. And you hope that you're top of mind and happen to be seen at the right time. That's all we can each hope for. But in the biggest scheme of things, everybody is so worried about their lives. And especially right now, when there is so much uncertainty in the world, this is huge for you all as entrepreneurs. Write this down. During times of uncertainty, people are looking for stability. And if they see something very similar consistently show up from you and your brand, like Tanya's always posting things like that. Tanya's saying the same things in a little bit different way. I always, people like to see 
consistency and repetition. And your social media is now their reality show. As dumb as that may sound, like I, I struggle with stories. You'll see me, I do a really good job and I'll post a bunch of stories all at once, but it's so redundant. You guys, I live pretty much the same exact life every day. We get up, we take a walk. I do a Zoom. I maybe do an in-person. I go to Amped and play trivia. I take another walk. I'm working out at the gym. Yeah, I got a wiener dog. I show them here sleeping by my desk. Do you see their little bed? They're right here. <laughs> And I go to bed by 8.30 because I already live like I'm in, whatever, I need a lot of sleep. And then I get up and I do the same thing all over again. I'm, I'm always like, why does someone want to watch this every day? And my mentor was like, Tanya, people, it's the new reality TV. They're comforted by the consistency. Watch, they watch you post the same shit every day. They're still watching. But you guys, it's bringing certainty and what people are getting all around from politics and inflation and finances is uncertainty. So seeing the redundancy of you and your brand is very comforting subconsciously. So as a business owner, you are going to look and feel like a broken record. It's going to be very mundane. I want you to say the same story over and over again with a little bit different picture and a little bit different thing. And especially if you are offering a service and you are in build mode, show up with that service. Just sprinkle in some personal on Facebook. Everywhere else, you can pretty much be almost 100% business. Facebook, though, especially with our demographic that all of us are in, you got to throw some personal in there. I think I think it really matters. And be authentic even on LinkedIn. You don't have to show up perfect. Here's the other reason. Um, any other questions? Sam, did I kind of answer that for you? Yeah, and you were kind of also getting into this, but how how often would you say like at least once a day on each of the social media channels? Um, I never want to scare someone away from doing what they can. So if often for you, is once a week because you weren't doing any, that's good enough. If often for you, maybe you're doing two and you could maybe even add one more. Like for a lot of us that are really in build mode, if you can put something out there most days, that's amazing. But here's the thing. And again, I'm, I'm kind of on a LinkedIn right now. I'm, I'm totally beating the LinkedIn to death. But only 4% of users on LinkedIn post content. Only 4%. And LinkedIn does not necessarily only um, show things in feeds based on the date they were posted. So if you go in there right now, you might see content from that I did four weeks ago as if it was brand new. So it has a longer lifestyle. And you guys, I'll be 100% honest. I, I really don't like social media. I hate it. I, I really don't like feeling like I have to share my entire world. My husband's kind of a private person. He doesn't like, we're. I'm never going to be a power couple. I've tried twice throughout the evolutions of my life. We aren't ever going to be the power couple. That will not be the role that I get to play in life. Um, so like I post... But I was so overwhelmed by trying to win the Instagram and Facebook algorithms that are constantly a moving target. That's why I went over to LinkedIn. I was like, I don't feel like I can be the businesswoman I want to be on any of these other platforms. And I'm getting beat by people that are willing to dance and do fancy things. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm just Tanya. Like, I can't do it. I'm out. So I show up now, but now I build it for LinkedIn and then I repurpose it to the other platforms. I'm so glad you brought this up because I really have ignored LinkedIn. But as you said, I just Google myself and that was the first thing that came up. So that's yeah. what people are seeing. And yep. I probably haven't posted on there in months. So Yep, it's exactly true. So um, that's that's personally why I'm doubling down, especially with everybody getting laid off and looking they're joining. If you look up the stats, it's insane how many people are joining. And the last thing is that LinkedIn shows their algorithms. They'll tell you exactly what they want to see. 
So it's less of a guessing game. You also can be very targeted. So trucking company, Jimmy, and can you unmute? Yeah, I can unmute. I actually was, I actually kind of wrote where I struggle with each of my days are very, very different. Mm -hmm. Um, I, my chef business kind of does its own thing. Although with the new, um, with me moving to another state and that type of stuff, I do have to drum up more business, um, and, and more business in that type of way, because I have a whole staff and things, but I have several businesses. So like every day is such a little bit different for me. I never know like what, what sits consistent or doesn't sit consistent because I know what people respond to. And so I'm trying to figure out how to um, relate the responses to, to also generate to them looking on board of my business, um, supporting the business, um, getting new clientele or whatever not, because I have those two businesses. Those are just the two that are on the front end, but I also have a cannabis farm. I also have a, a investment group and I have a tiny home community that I'm building too. Um, okay. I, I um, so, and I'm an investor myself into, into things. So each, um, each into, I'm, I'm just always a little bit overwhelmed because when I started on Facebook, Facebook was really personal. And then I, you know, I have two pages each with 5,000 people on those pages. Uh -huh. um, if I post or I consistently do post about business, but if I post something and I'm not attached to it, like if I just post about the business, two people watch. Uh -huh. If I put a pretty little picture of myself up there, a sexy little picture of me, Mm -hmm. a thousand people watch mm -hmm. and then I will post some I will try to post something business-wise or something I have doing after that because I've captured their attention but then that thousand will go down to 150 okay. and that so, just is the way of the world like you, uh, you're doing what you should do really like you're playing the algorithm as best you can I I wouldn't just know that that is the way of the world all of us are dealing with that yeah, I um so it's almost like it's almost like I want to put the business on the one that I know that's going to get a thousand people because I know I mean, I hate I'm pretty blunt like they love to see cleavage. OK, let's just get this real. And I have great cleavage. <laughs> so I put up cleavage and then I have a thousand plus people that thing. So lately I've been like, I just want to put like my business on the cleavage like yeah. and and move that but then I don't want them to think that it's we're moving boobs in trucking <laughs> it works for my food brand because my food brand is a sexier brand and um, it's an intimate brand we do a lot of I do a lot of more intimate as private chefs I I'm a chef for the NBA and NFL and um and some high-end clients. So it works for those. I do classes with couples. I do date night things with people and stuff like that. So it works with that brand, but like, like tiny homes, it doesn't work with that brand. So like, I just am, I, I'm just toying with like figuring out to either to start just to start all the way over on Facebook, but I've captured so many people. So that's where I sometimes get hard is how do I build those numbers up again? Mm -hmm. And going over to um, just having, just having business and my, you know, my business page, Instagram, I've, I've separated those a little bit more. I, because they allow, it's easier to allow those accounts to be separated. Um, I was going to say like in some, like you have, those are like tiny home community is super niche. I would allow that to be super niche and maybe just do a little bit. So for example, in that, in that example, like on your personal page, you can kind of like promote the other pages as well a little bit, but really like Instagram and YouTube shorts 
and some because YouTube video, because they come up really well in, in algorithms too, with those types of things that are so niche, like people search tiny homes and then they tend to gather in groups and they're all like, there's tiny home Instagram specific pages. Like if you're mm -hmm. really growing that, that's one where I would have a specific niche page. And then you can always have a link tree that links to all your other stuff, but that's probably targeting a very specific group of people. So mm -hmm. When it comes to LinkedIn, um, this is kind of what Donna was asking as well. So on LinkedIn, you know, that has a place in all these different things. Let me go ahead and share this. So you can build, when you build your LinkedIn pages, like on top of the box is my business. It's my LLC. Nobody really cares about that. I set up the page and I put a logo on it just so the logo would show up. So the business mm -hmm. is there, but I haven't built it all out at all because I'm not building that business. Now, if I was building that business, maybe I would a little bit, but so for like, for you, you might have from an, from a LinkedIn perspective, you could have each of your different businesses here. And then like, so for instance, this was my franchise page. Again, I just wanted the logo. Um, so I linked to the franchise itself. But if this was your trucking business, you could have the trucking business have a page. Then all five of those different owners could be admins and could be adding content. And then you could be sharing content and things like that. But it's still your personal page that gets the most traction. Just like on Facebook, I keep a personal face, a business Facebook page, and it's kind of my one I've had forever. It only has a 789 followers, and I will automatically share over everything I'm putting that's on business LinkedIn. This one, I don't put all my, my personal stuff. I am only keeping this just in case one day I want to do a, um, just in case one day I want to run ads, I have to have a personal page. And just in case one day um, I want to actually take advantage of that. But I don't worry about the algorithms or interaction on my business page at all on Facebook because it's very hard to get any traction. So like as a realtor, this, I don't know if you guys did personal pages or business pages for your real estate life. Um, did you do personal page, Sandy? You did? Okay. So I would do all my business stuff there, but I would share it all over to my personal page. Your business page is, it's just, and if you run ads, you might run ads to a zip code and to a target market someday, but it, I wouldn't overthink the interaction you get on a business page because it's one of the hardest things ever to do. Now, for all of you, once you build out your LinkedIn profile just a little bit, like you posting content on there, but then Jamie, and you can be very, very intentional. So you're like, okay, I know that I want to build this specific business. So I'm going to build up, I'm going to put a post about tiny homes once a week. And I'm going to put a post about my, um, my, um, chef business once a week. I'm moving to this new area. So I want to build that chef business. So then you can do a search and you can find people that, um, whatever you could buy zip code, buy title, buy location. You can intentionally be connecting with them. And then as those connections build up and they accept, then you can very intentionally do a post and you can even send that post to those specific people. So on LinkedIn, it's a little bit of a different game of intentionality because you can specifically choose who you're connecting with to build that market. Then the second, so same with you, Donna, like if you know these, maybe it's for your book, let's say you're going to promote your book, the, the Soccer Birds book, maybe you're intentionally connecting with educators guidance counselors, people in that realm, you're intentionally connecting with them because they may be the people that would be interested in having you come in to speak. So then I would do a search for guidance counselors. Oh, there's a guidance counselor group. 
So you could do a search for that. You could actually join those groups and then do specific posts. And depending on the intent that you have for that week, you can actually change what this headline is. So you could have it be something like um, educating students or providing books for blah, 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 blah. Be very, very specific on this headline. And then when you go post somewhere, be very specific about where you're posting. So say you were in one of those groups. Um, what's a group I'm in? Just a second. Um, let me look and just find one here. And I'll show you why, because this is one of the ways I've gotten the most um, interaction to a specific target market of someone I want to connect with and a, a group I want to build. Um, here, brain expansion group. So if I go into this brain expansion group and post something personally motivating or something like that, that's great. But what's even more important is a lot of times I will find something that a lot of people are commenting on. This one doesn't have very many people commenting on it. Let me go to Ed Meta. He always gets a lot of, he gets a lot of interaction typically. Still not clicking very well. One second. Sorry, guys. I want to show you what I mean here because it is important. I'll go to someone who's an influencer that I know a lot of people that I want to connect with are commenting on and following. So then I'll look at these comments and I'll go find. So Tara is a person I work with. When she comments here, people see her headline. And then I will load more comments. If I see someone post that I really want to like connect with. So let's say down here, okay, this lady, she looks like someone around, like maybe I would coalition at city of whatever. If she's maybe someone I would like to connect with, I'll reply here, say something to her comment, and then I'll go and personally try to connect with her to build the network. I know they're active on LinkedIn and I'm very intentional. So when you guys get that checklist, do you guys see what just happened? I'm very intentional about who I'm connecting with on LinkedIn and building my network with. So maybe Sandy wants to connect with um, people that are living in a certain area. Maybe they're in a certain income range in a certain community or work at a certain place. I'd be very intentional about my searches. Where do those people show up commenting in those places and intentionally connecting with them? Maybe you do that with mortgage lenders that you think would be good referral partners or maybe HR representatives at bigger businesses that do relocations into areas that you, you manage relocations into. So that's a way you can be very, very intentional on LinkedIn, which it looks a little bit differently than it does on a Facebook or an Instagram. So that was kind of down a rabbit hole, but Jamie and for you too, if you are specifically targeting a certain type of person for your chef services or for your cannabis farms or whatever, like who do you need to network with in those spaces? You can be very intentional about your connections and about the messages you send out. Um, and then you can still vary your different, you know, content, but you can actually intentionally send it out to certain people and groups. Did First, I, totally I need to figure... Guys? I, yeah, I'm very overwhelmed every time this is a conversation, but that's just probably a personal thing. I also need to figure out how to contact them because I don't even know how to log into my LinkedIn or <laughs> what how it was set up or any of these, like any of that type of stuff. Like I said, like an intern that was working for me on a very specific project was like, you need and and that was way back 2009 or so. They were like, you might have to reset a password and directly talk to LinkedIn. Do not start a new page. Yeah, I don't. don't even know. I don't even know what email this was connected to. That's how long this has been. Yeah, you so might have to I'm, totally dig yeah, in. LinkedIn does have help. Have to, so okay, that, that's I probably good. will have to like contact them or email them or something to figure um, that that piece of it that piece of it out. I um. That's the, that's the other thing is that like, I, um, I get nervous too, a little bit about, um, one of my businesses in particular, the cannabis farm, um, there, we, 
we are often flagged for content. Um, we have an attorney that is like helping us kind of filter through what that looks like. We are often flagged for content, um, even in legalized places uh, that it, that it's that cannabis is legalized in. And I get a little nervous sometimes of con- of putting the cannabis stuff with the other things that going because I, do, I have I be very yeah. intentional. So it, it okay. show up with it where you think you need to, maybe that's a niche one that's not connected to everything else, but okay. you don't have to have everything be a resume. Okay. Every you, everybody doesn't have to know everything. They get to know okay. what you want them to know. You know what I mean? So like, mm-hmm. where's the biggest ROI, you know, maybe, especially if you feel overwhelmed, Where's what's the one thing you want to grow and focus on that for the next 90 days? You don't have to do all the things. Pick one. I'm saying you can do many things and you can be a multi-dimensional entrepreneur, but you don't, but, but be very intentional with one, start with one and do it well. And maybe well means you're posting about one thing with intention every week. Yeah, the posting part is not actually an issue for me. Like I'm always online because that's how I find new business anyway. So like that part isn't thing. It's just what to post and how to post. I and then I get over I do get overwhelmed by what is responded to and what's not responded to. You gotta so, just forget that. In some mm-hmm. ways, you've gotta just curate your content, know that this is what I'm aiming to grow. All it takes is one or two of the right target market to see it, but you have to be consistent long enough to allow that to happen. But with the algorithms, the way they are, you just have to let that part go and hope the right person sees it. But you just, Mm -hmm. you can't play the game or you'll give up and not show up. Mm -hmm. You just can't. Like if we all played that game, I would have quit in 2011. For real. Okay. Yeah. So you you just, you can't, you can't worry very much about the likes and the shares and the whatever, because like, if you look at mine, like I will have people connect with me on LinkedIn because they saw my headline. They'll literally say it's because they saw me comment on something and they saw my headline and thought it looked interesting. And it'll be from something I did months ago. And all of my posts have no interaction whatsoever. Okay. I do get a lot of it. I, I can see on my website, it bings me every time somebody clicks on. And it is always very interesting where people are from clicking on to my site. Like somebody, I've been getting Australia clicking on. I don't know where the heck I clicked into Australia from, but somebody is asking me to possibly come and cook for them in Australia. And so like, yeah. So, and I, but, I, but then I sit and I say, well, where did they get this from? And then I don't know. And there's ask not, them. Oh, I, okay. you can always ask them, say, Hey, I'm always curious how people got connected with me. Okay. Cause love. yeah, it does let me talk to them as they're looking on the site. It tells me how long they're wa- viewing, what yeah. pages they're viewing on my site. And it says, do I want to chat with them? Yeah. So definitely you can always do that. So I, I I ask, and that's part of the LinkedIn um, checklist. I, I ask how they actually heard about me or whatever. Um, it's worth it. But but the, the biggest thing is do what you can consistently a little bit as much as you can. But consistency is the biggest thing, consistently showing up. Um, from a technical perspective, I think Canva has come a really long way. And one thing that I wanted to show all of you is that if you do just the one up from the free version, it actually now gives you a complete brand kit. So you can put in the colors you always use and the like, so your everything you do can be very consistent. You don't have to recreating, keep recreating. So you could say and try to be pretty consistent with your colors and what you use. And then you don't have to go find them every time. So you can look like a designer without being a designer, at least in the consistency perspective, it's all available to you. So you're not just like guessing what colors you typically use. You can actually know that when you're going to create them, 
you're using the right colors. And they have so many templates now and so much available that you don't, I mean, you can get all of your content and create your content just by going and finding like, here I go to social media, click it. I wanna make an Instagram post or a Facebook post or whatever. You can go ahead and find one that you kind of like in the templates over here. Go like that. Okay, now I don't want this picture, so I'm gonna go get one of my own pictures. I want this color. I'm gonna go get my own brand color. So there they are. There's my purple. It swaps out and it's all my own colors. So use some of those tools and resources to make your life easier. You don't have to be a graphic designer to do it. And you and Canva especially has a great help section. You can watch little five minute videos how to do something. You can Google how to do something. But get the color is the one thing. Pick a pick some favorite colors and pick some favorite fonts and just make sure you're consistent because once again, subconsciously, then when people are scrolling and they start seeing those things, they're gonna instantly relate it to you. Again, you don't have to be perfect, but I do think it makes a huge difference. When I don't wear purple, people ask if I feel okay because they're so used to seeing me in the purple jewel color hues, especially online. That's why I stick with it because people now connect me with that color. It's that strong. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They ask me if I'm sick when I don't wear purple. Uh, Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Karen, with you and images, I would go on a little adventure of po trying to post at least one personal image a day on LinkedIn, uh, uh, a week on LinkedIn and Facebook so that the SEO starts seeing the images. I think maybe Karen is doing something else right now, but that's what I would do if I was working on, um, especially with multiple people of different backgrounds with my name. Because when you go and search now, you see a lot of images because I post images. So they do come up in the feed. So like if you Google... Tanya Hagri, I post a lot of images, even of my face, even if it's a text image. So you guys are seeing images come up, even down here, images, almost all of them you're seeing, and a lot of them are branded, you guys. Like even if they were posted on Facebook, look at it, it's branded with LinkedIn. Your screen's not shared. Oh, sorry. I always appreciate when people tell me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So when I Googled my name, you can see there's a lot of images that come up. And even when I post them just on Facebook, do you guys see how even on Facebook, I branded them LinkedIn because that's my focus right now. So you can see that I'm, I'm a businesswoman. You don't know what I do, but you can see that I'm doing something. Do you guys get that? I'm a mover and a shaker. That's what you want. That That's Now that is crazy on the pictures. I do see that. Like I have my first three pictures. Of course, one is just like my LinkedIn picture. When I Google myself, next, of course, is cleavage. And the next one is um, my investment group. But then... All of a sudden, it goes into food that I don't even remember posting all of this, but I have posted this because I know my my aesthetic and my brand. Um, but then it's just food, 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 all yeah. that I've um, put up here, the cities that I've lived in and stuff. But it's interesting, the pictures. So whatever focus you're is, Jamian, like I would start putting like either a site or a tag of a hashtag, or even a little, like if you have part of your picture as a part of the logo, I would be plopping that on every photo that you post, even if it's a food photo, because like you could have like a little tag 
Like, let me see. See, I have, I was using just my name along t- a lot of times. Mm-hmm. I've gotten so much comments on Calm Hustle lately and like how much people resonate with that idea that I've started using that a lot more. But you can see that even if I was doing something, a lot of them, I was throwing the, the ones that I threw a little tag on, like you could make this even smaller. It could be a food thing. And you could have like a little logo of your business, the main one you want. You know what I mean? Like make sure you're branding those food photos if you can going forward. Yeah, going forward, I definitely will. And I guess it shows you where to these pictures are coming from or where they're on. That's crazy that a MySpace picture is on here. Um, But the first one is actually LinkedIn. Yeah. The other one, which is interesting to me, is Pinterest. And oh, Pinterest is I, I don't post my own content on Pinterest, but I build a lot of boards, mood boards for clients that are on there. So the Pinterest pictures, and then it's like my websites. LinkedIn shows up quite often on here, and then my websites, and then a couple of awards, and then during the pandemic, I was interviewed quite a lot during the pandemic. So a lot of those interviews and things from there are also on here. Yeah. Um, Isn't it fascinating how you have such a strong brand, whether or not you were intentional, like, isn't it crazy what people see about you? Yeah. And, and it's funny, the kid that I post the most also is in the top 10 pictures, but it's a baby picture of him and he's 19 now. So I'm like, (laughs) It, it is very, uh, I mean, it's very interesting that it's LinkedIn, Pinterest, then my investment group, then my chef business, LinkedIn again. Yeah. Um, just where, like where this comes up at and that this is what. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's actually like quite refreshing because I, I don't think I intentionally worked on this, but I intentionally wanted to change how what my google look like what people seen when they google um just because of my story and where i come from i come from a very street hustle and that's what they used to see at the beginning they would see like a blurb and then they would see this not so good things and and i don't mean not so good things as like i was this evil person out here i just i mean i made choices that you know weren't the best choices and so those came up there so now i can't even find those and i'm like right. on You're page. a businesswoman you flooded yeah. the world with businesswoman stuff so sandy one of the things that you could do is just be really intentional with your headline so that when people google you they might say you know homeowner expertise here whatever it is that you really want to attract be really intentional with that headline, helping people in X area with X or whatever. Be really intentional with that headline. And some little things to help stand out. Um, some of the things that I use all the time are Lingo Jam. It with Lingo Jam, it's free and you can go down and get a fancy text generator and any text like any text that you put in here, this is how like I got Calm Hustle to look different. So I grabbed like the calm from here, but then like the hustle from here. So it looked like it was moving forward or whatever. So then when I go and post on Facebook, it can have like that movement. So especially like on a LinkedIn, um, on a LinkedIn headline, if I want it to look See all my different type styles? It's all from Lingo Jam. That's where I got those. To look different, to look bold, to look italicized or whatever. That's where I got those. Um, Another thing that I use often is video.ai. And this is what I was thinking for you, Jamian. Like when you do a video... You can take this so you guys see, this is where I opened, I got a lot of this. I'll take and I'll put a long video up, like maybe an hour training for some of these. And when you upload it, then you can actually have it, um, put it specifically in your colors and your thing, your whatever, and it will give it pretty captions. So when you were talking about when you were talking about letting it, like putting the words over the cleavage, like 
even if it's a different business, you really could. And then you could specifically ask, see how you want it to look. And then you and can put the words you get and crazy. right okay. over the whatever. Some protection outfits. <laughs> so I love whenever I'm in movement, so, I have so many. So you can specifically, you know, make your videos do even more work for you. And I think that one was like $15 a month. And all you do is upload and then you can, it's super easy to utilize. So you can look super put together and professional without having, you know. Yeah, it takes me three hours to do, to up to bit of video. And then I get overwhelmed. And I'm like, okay, that's enough for the next six months. Yeah, just find <laughs> like, a good tool. Find a good okay. tool. Find a good tool and then honestly hire an assistant. I've had the same assistant in the Philippines since May of 2015 helping me with things. So yeah, eight she's been she's been with me eight years. So help. Hire help when you can. Um, any other questions? Was this helpful, you guys? Helpful? Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot and, you know, you have to digest it. I feel like it's, it's, it doesn't help that I haven't checked in. I haven't been to NW2 for a few months. And so um, it's just like, uh oh, <laughs> I think too, it's very much pick one thing and just do it, do it every week. That one thing, you know, show up one way and, and then it builds like I've I've not been perfect at all but the great thing is even the little bit of intention is more than 99% of the population and will set you apart yeah Karen yeah, I went yeah, all over and branding LinkedIn. Was, this, was this at all what you were hoping for <laughs> We can't hear you. It it just cut out. Uh, I was hoping you would show up and be you, and you did. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. Awesome. Any other questions? You know, uh, I could tell you that on these NW2 meetings, Mickey always goes around and makes every person say, what's your takeaway? And it's, boy, it makes you pay attention because you, you know, you have to, um, I mean, obviously we're paying attention because we want to be here, but it, you really like, okay, I'm going to be quizzed later. What's my <laughs> takeaway? And uh, so it, we've got a little bit of time. Maybe we should do that. And just for, as a, as a ringleader, you could, you know, <laughs> know that that's a thing. <laughs> do you do you want to do that Tanya yeah I'd love to I'd okay. love to why don't you kick well, us off my big takeaways um you know without even truly understanding what today was going to be about I was like oh I have all these different things that I'm doing but they're all related because it's all coming from me and it's like yeah and that's exactly what you were talking about so it was really great to <clears throat> and then just you know of course Jamie, my God, <laughs> you got so much going on. Um, you know, it is our stories that we have all these facets and, and I just, that really resonated with me. Uh, but the authenticity thing that the authenticity is better than perfection. Um, I'm partnered with somebody who is really hung up on perfection. I can easily get hung up on perfection and it's like, Oh my God, we're missing. So, and yet we're very, we have all this integrity. We have all this authenticity that we could be focusing on. So I feel like that's along with these technical things that you've talked about the Canva, the lingo jam and the AI, uh, the video AI, those are like, well, it's just a little bit of everything. Got some tools, got, but 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 really that authenticity over perfection is, I think, my big takeaway. Yeah, so thank you. I love it. I love it. How about you, Sandy? Well, <clears throat> for the last, I mean, I've never done much with LinkedIn. And over the last few years, many years, I mean, every time I hear a speaker talk about social media 
or anything like this. It's like LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. You have to do more with LinkedIn. And so this just reinforces that. But I love how you took it, took us through it in a little bit more detail and showed us how LinkedIn, it comes up way high on the search when we search ourselves. It's one of the top ones that people see. And I do know, like, if somebody was researching me, well, they probably would look at, at LinkedIn and see what I'm doing on there. And I never post. I mean, I'm connected with people. I'm in groups on LinkedIn, but I just don't even use it. It just never occurs to me. I'm on Facebook all the time. People can see my personality, but I, you know, I'm committed to do some posts on LinkedIn to put some content on there. Yeah. So it's yeah. very helpful. Yeah. Do you do a newsletter, Sandy? I do. So every <clears throat> so every Thursday, I have an e-newsletter that goes out in the morning. And so it'll have an article that either I wrote or that I got from a um, Keeping Current Matters, which is a real estate site that offers us content we can use. And then if I have listings, I'll post about them. And, uh, or if I have an event coming up, so that's every Thursday, I do the e-newsletter once a month or every other month, I do a mailed newsletter to my neighborhood farm. And that's different. Okay. So on LinkedIn, you can post an article or a newsletter. One of my friends, she just started using LinkedIn. She's an event planner. So the only people that are her target market are people that are hosting events. So it's pretty niche. She didn't think she would get any traction, blah, 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 blah. She posted her new first newsletter last week, and she had 111 people so far that have subscribed. That means whenever she posts a newsletter on LinkedIn, they're automatically going to get a notice in their mailbox, in their message that she posted a new newsletter and she doesn't even have to do anything. So you're already doing the content, Sandy. Just take that Thursday upload it to the newsletter section in your LinkedIn profile. And you are now posting content on LinkedIn and not having to do any extra work, but it's, it, it will put you front and center. And then that becomes a real life living thing on Google as well. And it will automatically get pushed. You don't have to ask for subscribers or anything. It just all happens and you're already doing the content. So there is a, there's a newsletter section on my profile. Yep. Wow. Let me show you. <laughs> let me show you what I mean. So when you're on, where's my LinkedIn? Who knew? When you're on LinkedIn, let me show you. I'll show you Anna's. She doesn't even use it much. Anna, there she is. Here's Anna's. Um, she posted her first newsletter. She has 107 subscribers. She just posted it a week ago. And she hardly, she has one post a month. But now when she posts another post, another newsletter, those 111 people are automatically going to get a notice. Has Anna been per perfect on LinkedIn? Absolutely not. She hasn't posted much at all. One month ago, she posted a congratulations. Like, She's not that active. She's like, I cannot believe the traction that it got. And it wasn't even something that, I mean, she posted like, be accountable, question your, like set clear goals about why you go to the event. It was short. That's it. It's a one pager. And she has 111 people that have opted in and subscribed. So when she posts another newsletter in two weeks, then they're automatically, it, it's going to get those eyes on her newsletter. Great. So Great. Donna, you could post one page from oh. a book. You could post one paragraph every so often, and it's going to automatically, you'll end up getting subscriber. Like it's crazy, you guys, what you can get for traction with just repurposing work you're already doing and have done. Any other takeaways, Sandy? Oh, um, oh, more takeaways. Well, um, well, just focusing, like I wrote down my vision and my values. So just different things that I can post about, focus on, uh, just to keep, uh, you know, all the different aspects of things that are important to me. 
um, you know, and putting my values out there. I had a, uh, I went to a class reunion the, uh, last summer and one of the gals checking people in, she said, Sandy, I need to talk to you later. I need to talk to you. And so it was about, she wants to work with me as a real estate agent. I mean, we weren't even like friends in high school. I mean, we were friendly. She's like, I see your values on Facebook and I want you to be my realtor when I move. So That's I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> your I love it. You did it. That's great, Sandy. I love it. Love it. Right. So I want to keep that going. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Jamie and oh, real I, quick. Oh, go ahead, Sandy. Last well, one. I also love the part where you said people want to see consistency. They want to see our mundane lives. They want to see that there's something consistent. And I over love and that. over. Yeah. I mean, I can come on to that. I'm very boring and consistent. <laughs> weird to I me. can do that. It's so weird to me that people want to see that every day. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. I'm like, this is so dumb, but whatever. I'll play the game. <laughs> I don't have to sit in a cube. I'll play your game. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Jamie, and quick takeaway from you? Um, my takeaways were um move or consistently consistency, um, having movement, um, um, keeping movement going, and then tools I put on here is just really um uh really figuring out the tools that I need to be able to execute. Um yeah. consistent consistently. So that's what I put as my takeaways. Yeah, yeah. Have the systems in place to help make your life easier since it's so busy. Absolutely. How about you, Miss Karen? <laughs> well, I I like the authenticity part a lot. Um, sometimes it's hard to imagine what that is, authenticity, you know. But I also like um the certainty in an uncertain world, because that's where we are at now. And the fact that you'd be consistent and do things all the time that I hadn't thought about that as be creating certainty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, do you guys ever go like we watch the same old movies or like, I know if I go look at Brene Brown or if I go look at Ed Millett or if I go look at certain people online, I'm going to, I go there specifically looking for the same type of material I'm expecting to see. <laughs> Whether I need to be like, okay, I need to feel some inspiration. I'm going there looking for that inspiration I'm expecting to see. I already know what I'm going to find. That's how consistent they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they've built their their pillars. They've built their pillars. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys, I'm honored. Thank you so much for having me. It Thank was really a full circle me. moment for me. And I'm really, really, really grateful. Wonderful. Bye. Good to see you. Just yeah, have a you. wonderful day. So, okay. We're, we're, we're leaving a little early, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. we'll talk, we'll see you all next month. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.